Well, hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna go over the skin signs of zinc deficiency. It's that time of year when cold and flu viruses are really common, and you're probably hearing a lot about the importance of zinc to staying healthy. Zinc is arguably one of the most important trace elements to humans. There are over 200 different enzymes in the human body that rely on zinc in order to function properly. Now you can get zinc from human breast milk, animal-based foods, shellfish, leafy greens, and legumes. Now your skin is actually the third most zinc abundant tissue in the body. And one of the reasons I love dermatology so much is that the skin is a window to what is going on internally. Other signs besides what's going on in your skin that clue you into perhaps zinc deficiency include depression, diarrhea, just feeling listless, irritable, and also poor sleep. Zinc deficiency in young children can lead to poor growth and sexual immaturity and if not corrected, long-term can result in death. So it's very important to your body. Now, when we're talking about zinc in the skin, it's most abundant actually in the top part of the skin, the epidermis, and it does a variety of things there. It's critical for wound healing, and it's also important in immune function. So people who have zinc deficiency are prone to poor healing, and they're also prone to skin infections with things like candida, which is a type of yeast, that and they're also prone to staph infections. Zinc also has antioxidant properties in the skin and is thought to play a key role in mitigating some of the damage upon exposure to environmental stressors like ultraviolet radiation. The classic rash of zinc deficiency is a well-demarcated red scaly rash that presents around the mouth, on the extremities like the hands and the feet, and also in the private area, around the anus, around the genitals, Around the mouth, the rash classically spares the upper lip, so it has a horseshoe or U shape. Now, if the zinc deficiency remains untreated, this rash will progress to develop little water blisters, blisters, and in some cases begin to lead to increased skin cell shedding that can compromise your health quite a bit. Zinc deficiency can lead to what is called a paronychia, basically an inflammation of the skin around the nails, the nail folds. You can also develop horizontal grooves in the nail plate. These are referred to as Bose lines as a result of zinc deficiency. Zinc deficiency also affects your hair and hair loss is one of the most common presentations of zinc deficiency. It's going to be a type of hair loss called a telogen effluvium. Now I have several videos talking about telogen effluvium. You'll recall from those videos that really any stressful event can lead to a shifting around of the hair cycle to cause more hair to shed. It's basically saying now is not the time to be growing hair and as a result you end up shedding a lot of hair. But beyond the telogen effluvium, zinc deficiency also impacts the hair strands themselves. Zinc turns out is important for the incorporation of cysteine. Cysteine is an amino acid that's really important for the synthesis of the hair keratins and in, with zinc deficiency you don't get good incorporation of that and therefore there can be some subtle findings when you look under the microscope at the hair strands, they're obviously gonna be more brittle, prone to breakage. Now, zinc deficiency can either be hereditary due to gene mutations that you have inherited, or it can be acquired. Hereditary zinc deficiency is otherwise known as acrodermatitis enteropathica. This is due to a gene mutation in SLC39A4, which is a zinc transporter. So it leads to defective uptake of zinc through the gut. And this presents in babies um, either upon weaning, shortly after weaning from breast milk, because breast milk, as it turns out, has um, compounds in it that increase zinc bioavailability. So you don't see it in those babies until weaning unless the mother has low zinc in the breast milk. You also will see it in infants who are not breastfed, who are formula fed much earlier. And they're gonna develop that rash around the mouth, on the extremities, and in the diaper area. So that's hereditary zinc deficiency or cause for zinc deficiency. But acquired zinc deficiency is most often seen in people who are alcoholics. Alcoholics are at risk for a variety of nutrient deficiencies due to the fact that in severe alcoholism, they end up subsisting on alcohol only and not eating and they become vitamin and mineral deficient. It's quite sad actually. And uh, zinc deficiency is, is gonna be seen in those populations. People who have very restrictive diets. Good absorption of zinc can be affected by other micronutrients in the diet. 
Phytates, iron, and casein can limit the absorption of zinc. Now, if you're eating a well-balanced diet, this is not likely a problem for you. But if you are following a very restrictive diet, it is much easier to get into a territory where you are not only not getting enough zinc, but maybe you are having poor zinc absorption. Then you can have malabsorption as a result of inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. If you have had gastric bypass surgery, it's gonna be a risk factor for you as well. And you may need to be on supplementation. In the hospital, patients who are placed on what's called total parental nutrition, basically bypassing the gut, they can develop zinc deficiency if it's not adequately supplemented with zinc. And in pregnancy, you're at risk for zinc deficiency due to higher demands. All right, so those are the signs of zinc deficiency that appear on the skin. One of the reasons I love dermatology so much, you guys, is that a lot of times some these skin manifestations, they start appearing earlier than the other systemic symptoms like the depression, the diarrhea. So if caught early, then the patient can be treated before it goes on to cause more problems. How do you diagnose zinc deficiency? It's actually kind of complicated because it's not necessarily as straightforward as you might think. The skin changes and knowing the skin changes, being able to recognize them is definitely an important step in the right direction to clue you into zinc deficiency. However, it's important to remember that Zinc deficiency in isolation is not always the case. You know, I mentioned earlier, alcoholics, they stop eating, and so they're likely going to have other comorbid mineral and micronutrient deficiencies, so a more broad workup is likely going to be needed. But this rash that I've described to you, as well as the hair findings, the nail findings, and if other symptoms have developed, that's a, definitely a clue in the right direction. Now, a biopsy can be taken of the rash and it's gonna show changes characteristic of a, a nutritional deficiency. We see these kind of changes, not only in zinc deficiency, but also other uh, mineral and micronutrient deficiencies, but it can help support the diagnosis. Early on, the skin is gonna have a type of degeneration in the epidermis. What about a lab test? Plasma levels of zinc do reflect zinc intake and can support a diagnosis of zinc deficiency. Fasting zinc levels less than 70 micrograms per deciliter or postprandial, which means after eating, uh, zinc levels less than 65 micrograms per deciliter supports the diagnosis of zinc deficiency. Of course, we always have to look at the patient as a whole. There are a variety of other factors that can influence the plasma levels of zinc and render the test less than accurate hypoalbuminemia, which means low protein in the blood, low albumin in the blood, inflammation, and oral contraceptive pills actually can cause the zinc levels to be low. And plasma zinc levels can be artificially high if there is any kind of contaminant in the coating of the tubing. So when this test is ordered, you actually have to get a special type of tube. So plasma levels of zinc also vary throughout the day. Between early morning and late evening, you can get a 33% decrease in plasma zinc levels. So it's because of this, it's recommended that not only do you get a fasting zinc level, but you get it early in the morning. So if the test was taken later in the day, it may not be accurate. And especially if you're not fasting, it may be artificially high. Now, once this is diagnosed and treatment with zinc supplementation is initiated, these uh, signs, they are reversible. They, they, re they actually reverse relatively quickly. Now, people who have that genetic condition, acrodermatitis enteropathica, are people who have malabsorption, they have to be on zinc supplementation pretty much for life, and they have to be monitored, their zinc levels have to be monitored regularly to ensure that their, their levels remain good. They have to be on three milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day. Now, people with acquired zinc deficiency, say due to diet, they need to be on one to two milligrams of zinc per kilogram of body weight per day. So zinc, in summary, is really important not only for your skin healing and recovery, you can get this rash if you're deficient in zinc, it can affect your hair, your nails, and it's really, really, really important for your immune system. So having suboptimal zinc levels puts you at risk for not only skin infections, but for getting sick, really, really sick. What about just taking a zinc supplement? Zinc supplementation is popular, but you can have too much of a good thing. Consuming too much zinc can upset your stomach, cause gastric irritation, and it can actually interfere with absorption of other things, iron and copper. Uh, you can end up developing low copper as a result of unnecessarily high supplementation with zinc. So discuss with your treating healthcare provider if 
zinc supplementation is helpful for you or necessary for you before just taking a zinc supplement because long-term unnecessarily high levels of zinc, they can have adverse effects. All right, you guys, those are the signs and symptoms of zinc deficiency as it relates to skin, hair, and nails how it's diagnosed, how it's treated, who's at risk for it. I hope this was helpful to you guys. On the end slate, I'm gonna put my most recent video going over the importance of vitamin D in the skin. So check that video out. But if you like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.